It's that time again for EverQuest Next Into the Portal. Your hosts for this evening are... Geek Domo. Lock Six Time. And Trend Day. Let's get to the show right about now. Oh, bro. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Oh, we invited him. Is he back? Yeah. Tobrin is back. Is, okay, the volume's good? Okay, good. Sorry, Tobrin, I haven't made an intro for you. It's, yeah, it's fine. It takes like an hour to put that together, and I just haven't got around to it. I'm sorry. As long as people know who I am, it's fine. Yes. <laughs> this is Tobrin. Tobrin. Tobrin, the facial hair expert. <laughs> I stole I stole that, Locke's me. hat. I got Locke's hat on today. <laughs> Tobrin's trying. He's got a little stubble going. Just a, just a little bit, you know. Not, yeah. not too much, you know. Just... Yeah, <laughs> he's trying to be like Dan <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe. All right, everybody. So welcome to Into the Portal and EverQuest Next topic. Dis EverQuest Next discussion. Boy, I threw the topic in there. I don't know. Um, <laughs> tonight we're gonna do a little bit of a speed round. Um, Locke has uh, an operation tomorrow. Tell us about your operation, Locke. Um, I'm having my legs uh, attached to Zaphos's legs. Mm. Uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be sharing knees. Um, oh. Are you going this, to connect to like the thighs where the boobs were, or are you, are you just like leaving that far? <laughs> See, I, th I thought. Yeah, you were well, it's to... there were two options basically. We could either go sort of front to front like that and share knees that way, but we thought then you know it'd be awkward in the morning with things touching mm -hmm. so we're actually going we're having the lower part of our leg from the knee removed and being joined together that way no. um, you need, you need like i said the there'll, there'll be an the adjustment of, period involved. the bottoms of your feet fuse together that way you can be soulmates <laughs> hey, how's it going? Oh, yeah. so yeah we're gonna do a short one tonight we're gonna try to keep it in an hour i know that's gonna depress some of you but uh but yeah, that's where we is. All right. Absolutely. So yeah, that's that's. Uh, somebody's asking me. Has asked me about three times so far in the chat. Can I please, please, tell people how to get access to the alpha forums? Yes, you purchase a Trailblazer pack. Yep. Yep. And that's then you awesome. use yeah. your. What what do they call it? Just your, your SOE. Login? Is it station login? Yeah. Yeah. Station name. Yeah. Um, and that will be that will be attached to your account. Oh, Mika says that uh, she has a trailblazer but no access. Well, uh, George, Dave, Georgian, are you here tonight? Hiding. I didn't see Dave. Him. <coughs> that's 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 <laughs> sad. I'm sad, Panda. Well, if you've so got. So that. Geek Domo is sad. <laughs> While we are waiting for Dave Georgian to expose himself, while we're waiting for him to reveal himself, um, if you're going to get your questions in, get them in now. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, yes. like we said, speed run. Speed run, one hour. So that's all you get them. Doing an hour. Yeah, that's it. No yeah, more. Get your yeah. questions. In. Okay, I'm all fired up. Let's go. Let's all do right, it. let's do it. So, what are we going to talk about first? Ah, uh, let's see. News from last week. What exciting news came out in the EverQuest next work since last week? Um, um, isn't the new piece of lore app, Mages of the Tear Doll, I think is out now? Mages of the Tear Doll. I didn't. Has anyone read it? No. no. I have not read it yet. I'm sorry. I've got it. <laughs> right, I'm I'm meant to, you know what? I, I, I totally forgot about it. Um, I know it as well. It's an interesting one because it's doesn't it take place at the same time as the last stand of the Tear Doll? Mm -hmm. Did I, is that I believe right? so. They're, 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 but it's from it's from a different perspective. Right. So we're kind of I think we're sort of starting to see our first faction based perspectives, maybe, for the lore. Maybe. Insane. Oh they actually they say it takes place before the last stand. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, I thought it took no. place at the same time from the mage's perspective because you know you got the Rangers perspective from the Tear Doll, but mm. it was cool to see the uh, mages. 
the fall of the bastion is at the same time yeah that's that's the one that i'm yeah. reading right now I'm just at the beginning of chapter two all right what else anything exciting did uh oh, J dave jordson said that we are going to have uh a new landmark video to help explain what mm. is landmark because apparently three quarters of you in this audience right now have no idea what landmark is. <laughs> That's, that really seems to be it. It's it's astonishing to me how uh, people haven't haven't really got a, a good grasp of what the what the intention behind landmark is, what the what the design goals of it are for a game. Like people people seem very stuck in the idea that it's a you know an you know, a next gen Minecraft builder mm -hmm. to make assets for EverQuest Next when when really, you know, the, the intention of it is is so much more than that in so many different directions as well. <laughs> right. So I'll be looking forward to seeing what the video says about yeah, that. I'd like to see him clarify, but of course we're all the more rabid type fans and I think I, I understand completely what it is, but you know, maybe it'd be neat to have him say that. And that's supposed to come out soon, right? T M? Yeah. See, I think people understand perfectly what it is, and they're just trying to get more content out of them. That would be great if, we could <laughs> oh, yeah. if they could show us some more stuff while they're explaining it better, like some new screenshots, or not even screenshots, actual video the whole time. I was going to say, yeah. don't sell us short. Um, <clears throat> don't undermine the plan. Exactly. Somebody asked a question, what is Landmark? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> All right, what else? Anything else exciting and new? I don't think uh, so. There was a new roundtable response video. Oh, well, we can get to that. Okay, let's go ahead and go to topic two then. We're going quickly. Uh, new roundtable response and question. So what was the new roundtable response then? Go ahead, Trent. Uh, lock. Uh, the, <laughs> the new roundtable response was about um, holiday features in EverQuest Next. Uh, what kinds of things we'd like to see in there. Um, they, they were very vague on the details. They were basically saying they are going to have them. You know, what form, exactly what form they'll take is still very much in the air. So it's another one. If you're interested, you know, if you, if you want to get involved, this is a perfect time to get on the forums, the official forums. You know, if you, if you don't have access to the alpha forums, you can, you can go get involved on the discussion there. They do read it. You know, they, they've made a point of mentioning a few, uh, a few different ideas from the community again that they like um, in the response video if you haven't seen it yet. So yeah, get involved. Get involved in the discussion. One thing they did say that was that was interesting to me was that um, the AI within the game won't have to be changed in any way for them to react to the holidays. So they'll just be in the world, and the the NPC characters will be set up in such a way that when the holiday happens or when certain events happen, they'll just react to the event as it as it comes about. So that to me is is very interesting from a, a sort of procedural content. Um, perspective. So we'll have that one cranky old bastard in town. I was like, "Stop wishing me a happy." Blah, 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 blah. I don't care. It is going to be Festivus. Oh, they they did say it's Festivus for sure for the uh, the winter time holiday is called Festivus for the rest of us. Nice and Festivus. Big. Festivus. Festivus. I think a falcon just dove into my backyard. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is something that happens every day over there. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 that one time we Does he have him. a note attached to his leg? <laughs> oh, there you go. It could be a note this from Dave Jordan. <laughs> Delivered by Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then what was the what's the new question? Uh, anyone else wanna wanna take Um it? I can't actually remember what it was. I don't either. <laughs> That's why I was like, don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very prepared the new, uh, tonight, actually. The, the new roundtable question posed this week was, um, it was uh, basically asking if you, if a player sells an item to an NPC vendor, should the NPC oh, vendor yeah, then right. be able to sell that back to other players, not mm -hmm. just the player that, that sold it? And this is a question I find I find very interesting. Obviously, you know, we talk about the economy a lot on this show and moving items around the world and items having weight and mass and size and you know it being important to move them around. So I think this is maybe an indication that that's that's what they're thinking. You know, the fact that it will be, you know, it will be important where you buy and sell things to be mm -hmm. able to to get the best kind of deals. I hope so. Anyway, I, I assume that's I assume that's what they're thinking, and it seems like the player base as a whole, you know, that are voting on it, you know, are, are thinking along the same kind of lines. 
Dave Georgeson, though, interestingly, said flat out, no, he doesn't want to see that. Didn't and the reason see he what, gave the static one or the he, the he didn't want to say he didn't want to see any of it. He he said he he doesn't want players to be selling things to vendors because he wants everything to be a, a sort of player to player experience. He wants everything mm-hmm. to be kind of propped up by the players and he doesn't want you know he doesn't want the game getting in the way i suppose but what if would you be want yeah but what if you have like you you've you've been crafting for a while and you got ten thousand loincloths that you just have to sell you know you're gonna have to try to find ten thousand people now to sell them to i mean it's, it's either vendor them or, or throw them away and they're all well, know, that, good, very good loincloths that depends on the on the crafting system though doesn't it i mean there's nothing to say that you couldn't salvage that loincloth back into regular cloth or leather or, or something or you couldn't you know stitch a bunch of loincloths together and make one giant ogre loincloth um <laughs> it's, it's it's really based on the system and i'm sure that any economic model that they have will be robust enough to account for you know how the crafting system works yeah i mean you'll be able to do some um the, the the one I think is winning right now, and it's probably the one that I think most people want, is uh, yes, social buyback options are fine, as long as the merchant is also also has a static list of purchasable items. So this is the guy you go to to sell your fruit, and he just so happens to have an ogre loincloth there that was made by Tobrin, and you can, <laughs> he can buy you can buy that ogre loincloth. Master crafting, master crafted ogre. If it, if it's been used, can it be marked as such? Because yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's got racing stripes. Uh, Is that what you call them? Mm-hmm. I, call them I call them fudge ribbons. Okay. Um, <laughs> anyway. Ogre nappies. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So yeah, that's pretty cool. It's a good. It's a good, it's a good question. And I, I what, what do you think on it, Tobrin? Do you have any thoughts on uh, on what you I like? I only. I've only seen a system like this in back in the day when I played RuneScape. That's really, really, really old. But it was interesting because chat was then spammed with things that just weren't common, but it was ridiculous amounts because everyone wanted it, but it wasn't the most common of things. And then it sometimes it just didn't feel enjoyable. Because but if you sell like, that oh. cod piece of doom to the vendor in, um, yeah, well, then Nariac, one person, the, oh, the, the legendary one person will get that. Right, one but what I'm saying, gonna get that, and then everyone else is going to keep spamming. Well, what I'm saying though is, say like you get the cod piece of doom and you take it to a vendor in Nariac, and it's the guy all the way in the back next to the dead ponies, um, and that's where you're going to sell it to that particular vendor. Now that means that if somebody else wants to buy cod piece of doom, they've got to go all the way into Nariac, go to the back where the vendor is, in next to the ponies, and buy that from that guy. Yeah, I suppose. So therein lies a problem. Like if it's a global type of sale then maybe, okay, maybe then you look at a vendor and it has a list of everything that was sold, but that's going to be database optimization would be a big problem right there because you consider all the millions of things that are going to be sold and uh, having to sift through all of it would be a pain in the neck. I mean, look at um, Guild Wars 2 right now. The auction house is pretty much just a storage facility, and it's just yeah, massive, bad. massive, massive. It's all servers as well, the Guild Wars 2 one. It isn't even server-specific. Right, so you'll see a piece of cloth and, and it's, there's 50,000 of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't even need to be... Like some items, there's millions and millions of um, on, the, on the auction house at the moment. It's, it's absolutely crazy, but it's, it's very fluid. And I think the problem that I have with it is it's, it's so instant. It's like when you pick something up, you can put it on the auction house from anywhere in the world and it, it just leaves your inventory straight away so it's like you know items don't really mean anything and I, I find I feel that that's mind you items don't really mean anything in that game anyway so I suppose it fits quite nicely but. people in chat are mentioning <laughs> that uh, the East Common Lands Tunnel and there it will be in the game um, if you've seen there's some art from when they were showing the black box video there's a real quick scan where they're scanning over somebody drawing and he's drawing the East Common Lands Tunnel so mm-hmm. there's a very good chance that that'd be a great place to go sell your stuff and I would like to see that again. Yeah, I don't know. This, uh, you know, I do. I do rag on the Guild Wars Two uh, trading. Is it called the trading post? And that the auction yeah. house. Anyway, it's a it's a global auction house that's totally instant, and you just you just search for what you want, and it's very impersonal. And you know, it's it's meant to not impact the game. Basically, you know, you're meant to just throw things on there and forget about it. Um, whereas on the other hand, like Tobrun was saying with the RuneScape model, where you're just standing, you're just standing in the middle of an area. You know, just yelling, want to sell, want mm-hmm. to buy, over 
and over again. You know, I think that's it is it is disrespectful of, of you know players' time. You know, to expect to expect people to do that. You right, know, and to that's buy old school. So. That's very old school. <laughs> Florida really Stock school. Exchange. Yeah, yeah. Buy, 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 <laughs> yeah. sell, sell, sell. You know. Okay, so, so, so I think you know. You, hopefully, there's a happy medium. Obviously, that'll be. It is. It is one of those grey areas where it's going to have to be some sort of compromise, and some people will be more happy than other people. Mm -hmm. But I think that you know, if we're talking about vendors already. Maybe player-owned vendors. You know, <laughs> that if, I if, a player, if a player amasses a certain amount of wealth, you know, we've got Landmark already. Perhaps we could set up our own market stores, our own shops. I totally uh, like want that. to see player vendors because think about it: if you're a specialist and that's what you sell is loincloths, you know you can yeah. have your loincloth vendor standing out there in a loincloth, uh, your whatever best best one, and there you go, ta-da! Yeah. And then they sell, and people go, "Oh, this is loincloth guy. This is where I want to get my loincloths." Or bricks. Yeah, and it's it's cool because it it adds a sort of it adds a permanent thing to the area that people can go back to. People can see. You know who's very successful, who's not so successful. You know people showing off their wealth, different ways of buying and selling. Perhaps they could sell more items at the same time. And I think it'd be interesting to amass, like, um, to link uh, how you could sell things with how much wealth you'd already come across. So you know you'd have to you'd have to pay the NPC vendors. You'd have to you know pay a certain amount of rent on a building or something. So the people mm -hmm. that were really interested in trading and making money. You know, would have a way to visually show up. Look how successful I've been. You know, as as a PVE player would, you know, would do that with items that they had equipped. You know, maybe a trader would be able to do that. And I think that'd be, it'd be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? It would. I think so. I don't know. so. What are you thinking, Trendy? I haven't heard much from you tonight about this. You think it's nothing? He blinked. Oh, good, he's still alive. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I was like, okay, I was, maybe his screen like, froze. I was trying to, <laughs> yeah, do that. <clears throat> Just sit there, and I was like, these lights are burning my corneas! <laughs> ah! Yeah, it's coming from the bottom, too, so you kind of got the big eyebrow thing going on. It looks like you're mm -hmm. evil. I've got the, the, the beetle brow thing. I'm, I'm like a mentat from Dune. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the, a powerful The spice look. that stains the lips. The lips are warning. The warning is a... It's the juice of Sefu. It's the juice of Sefu. It is by will alone I set my mind in motion. Mm -hmm. Anywho, Love for the Brian Dorif, he was such a great pirate of breeze. Speaking of, uh, uh, yeah, my loincloth vendor will be a dark elf named Dorn, as revenge for all the times he <laughs> killed my ass. That's just me. All right, so uh, I guess we can move on if Trendane's got nothing to, to say about it. All right, moving on to topic number three. This is the big topic of tonight, and here we go. PvP slash PvE versus PvE slash PvP. Yeah, PvP, yeah. <laughs> red so, server, red server. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess I guess we could preface this that uh, Tobrin and Locke put out a very controversial and evil video earlier this no, week. <laughs> Caused many babies to gnash their teeth and no, it's scream and wailing. Soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> it's all part of the marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. We, we well, get all meets. So we had to make up our own marketing, you know. So exactly. So, <laughs> you guys want to fill us in on what started this whole gnashing of teeth? Voxel Populi. Voxel Populi. That guy. Yeah, there's a there's a show there's a, a show about EverQuest next that uh, that I do on YouTube called the Voxel Populi. And um, over over the past couple of weeks, me and me and Tobrin have been putting some effort into playing EverQuest Project 1999. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was it's, it was it's tricky. It's not you know it, it's not easy to get on that thing. You know they put a few hurdles in your way. But um, we we rolled on a PvP server and we were talking about PvP and open PvP and that kind of stuff. And it it really it really did get me thinking about. Um, a lot of people I've seen uh, on the forums talking about EverQuest Next are very excited about the idea of um, of challenging PVE experiences because of the um, because of the emergent AI because of um... <laughs> what's trying to do <laughs> so that is like pushing that that <laughs> URL down underneath me. <laughs> um, I'll explain yeah, the URL they're... in a second. Just go ahead, continue. Sorry. Uh, but in in my opinion, there's, people people talk a lot. You get a, a subset of hardcore 
uh, PvE players that say they want challenging experiences, they're bored of grinding against simple mob mechanics, they don't want to log into a game and just run the same dungeons over and over and over and over again, you know, with people that might as well not be there with them. They want teamwork and they want it to be challenging and visceral and all this kind of thing. So I, I made a video basically saying, why don't you try PvP? You know, it is it is a more vis visceral experience. It is, you know, it's it's more challenging. It's never the same. And I, I did a little talk about that, and I feel like I feel like I didn't express myself as well as as well as I could have because uh, there were quite a few people who immediately um, the first thing they wanted to talk about was how free for all PvP is awful because you get gankers and griefers. Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't the point of the video at all, but. It, happened enough times to really get me thinking about you know this is a real it's a real disconnect between people's perception of what pvp even is and i know that trendane had some really interesting points to make about that so i don't know trendane if you want to if you want to share those with us now i i was grabbing the the link to it <laughs> um <clears throat> i tell you what while i'm doing my blah, 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 blah. Uh, you put the link in Twitch chat because somebody in Twitch chat was asking for a link to the. All right. Well, somebody's got jet, fighter jets. They're chasing falcons. <laughs> Before you, why, you, why, why the falcons are going overhead? Um, F eighteen falcons. The uh, the the thing is though, there's a lot of people on YouTube and will just have a knee jerk reaction when they see something in a video before they watch the whole thing or listen to the entire explanation. They instantly go, "I hate it." Or I love that, and no, I, I haven't finished my whole dissertation here, folks. You've jumped in and jumped the gun. You stole my thunder and all that. So maybe that might have been what it is. But go ahead, go ahead. As you're please. sitting there going, yeah. <laughs> Watch it. Do maximize it. Maximize it's, it. it, it full there, screen. It's like you just say, you say PvP, and then people go, oh, gankers are horrible, and I go, well, I, I don't think, I don't think free-for-all PvP is good in MMOs, I, I agree with that, I don't, I don't think it works in the style of MMOs that, you know, I think people interested in EverQuest Next are going to want to play, even me, like, I played DayZ quite a lot with some friends, and I decided going into that game that I was never going to kill another player. You, you have to. Oh, you don't. You, you do. You just get killed. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it's it's so like the, kill or be killed. I have to say, in the early days, it was a lot better because there was always that kind of moment of you know, are they gonna? I think the the trick is to really get the drop on them, so you could kill them if you wanted to, and then people tend to trust you. Whereas if they see you first, they'll just kill you. But that was really interesting to me, and I had I had some really good and fun experiences from that. And there were also times where I just got shot. You know, from nowhere, like I had no idea what even happened. I was I was running along happily, and then I was dead. Yep. You know, and that that was that was irritating, but it it just seemed it seemed interesting to me that just the mention of PvP immediately made people go, "Oh, gank and griefing, it's horrible." And I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, I, I agree." <laughs> that's, but then that's people wanted to argue about. with me about why there shouldn't be open PvP in the game, and I was I'm just there going, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> Some of the, we're arguing the same point. I don't understand why we're having <laughs> yeah. this debate. Now, I for me, a lot of the, some of the best PVPers I have ever dealt with. You know, I would. You know, it was, one of them was in Darkfall, and <laughs> which was a great thing because that was open world PVP. There, there were no factions. It was free for all. Everything. Murder. Um, it was just murder. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you had no idea when the guy next to you was going to go. Eh. You know, I just shoot you. Uh, sorry, I, my bow went off accidentally. It's like, no, bows don't accidentally go off. You have to. I was, you know. I was cleaning it. <laughs> my crossbow accidentally went off. I had to. It's the easy it. way to dry the string is to, and all the water comes out. Now the um, anyway, so one guy would just he he constantly come at me and would just shoot me. And go, ha! Ah, you suck at PvP. I'm like, I know that. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and so he would just come back over and over and over again and just keep shooting me. And I'm like, just let me know when you get bored. Oh, you know. <laughs> it's, I find, and then this this could be a total wild generalization, but people that are really heavy duty in the PvP griefing have small, really, really tiny 
egos that egos, they, that they, they have magnify. To, that they try to make themselves feel better and to try to make that ego feel bigger and bigger and they stroke that ego often enough so that it explodes. So to continue. Um, <laughs> anyway, another guy came in because eventually this guy got bored and left. And another guy came in and said, so uh, you're not very good at PvP. I said, yeah, thank you. I've heard that. Um, and and I knew that before I started. He's like, do you want some pointers? And I'm like, okay. And he actually sat down. And when we would PvP, he would at some point, he would stop and say, okay, here's what you're doing. You, you keep doing this. And what this does is it opens you up and makes you vulnerable to this. So well, actually I would to recommend. Yeah, and that was great. I guess that's that was. Cool. But that he had to torture really you awesome. first. He had to show you just how awesome he was. Like, I have to be your teacher. I am your grand sensei. And I'm going to kick your ass till you're in a bed getting IV <laughs> drips. And then I'll stand next to you going, would you like me to teach you to be a grandmaster like that? <laughs> you know what you did wrong. <laughs> you, 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 you mad, bro? <laughs> I think that's good though. It's it's a posit it's a positive interaction between between two players in a game. You know, Trendane got something out of it, but that's very I think, rare. Ul by the I way. think ultimately, like the the great thing about that is Trendane went into a game that he wanted to play. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew that he knew that he wasn't going to be particularly proficient, but he was willing to learn. And you know, he he went into it because it was the experience that he wanted to have. And what I find interesting is a lot of people who do complain about gankers and things they talk about the nature of consent within the game mm -hmm. and i think really for me I, I wonder like when when does consent become implicit with within a game like if you're if you're talking about a pvp situation i know someone i was talking about used used the analogy of if they're walking down the, the street they don't expect anyone to just haul off and punch them but if they step into a boxing ring with someone then that's a different thing. You don't jump and in a planet side too. I just thought too, but if you if you walk into if you're in a PVP area mm -hmm. in a PVP game, surely that is walking into a boxing ring because Absolutely. the other per the other person has to assume that that's what you're there for as well because you're there. Mm-hmm. I would agree so with that. that's that's my thing. Like when is obviously ganking and griefing is bad, and campers are morons and children and whatever. But <laughs> when when is consent implicit? Tobrum, what do you, what do you think? When do you when do you think it's okay <laughs> to kill someone else in a game? <laughs> yeah, just exactly as you said. If you know it looks like a situation where you would kill them and they're invading or whatever, that's fine. If they're out a low level zone. Doing crafting or something? No, right. don't go there. <laughs> Grim Liv <laughs> just, just, don't. just says, uh, "Hey, now I craft all the time in PS2." Well, you can, but if somebody came and shot you in the head while you were crafting, you'd be like, "Well, he got into the base." <laughs> you know, I mean, it's one of those <laughs> things. It's like you're in a PvP game, and mm. and 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 somebody said earlier that uh, you know MMOs are supposed to be built in the spirit of cooperation, and and in general, PvP is not cooperative unless you're all there for doing PvP. Like, if it's a PvP objective, yes, but stabbing somebody while they're making bread and they're in their oven, not necessarily a PvP objective, necessarily. Yeah. The, uh, I, th I think... But, but, uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Okay, all right, fine. Um, I think that... <laughs> Go ahead. Let me talk. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the thing that, that the two of you uh, keep talking about that I think for some reason is not syncing with what you know the, the people who are constantly bitching about the thing is, is that the two of you are talking about like specific areas, zones, and everything where it's it's free for all PvP. I think a lot of the people they see like in in your comment section on the Voxel Populi, they see FFA, they think free for all, and they think the entire world is that way yeah. and I mean it's like an entire PvP server where no matter where you go no matter what you do you are always in a PvP zone that I would not really enjoy all that much PvP zones where it's you know you step in it's it's implicit that perfect no problem yeah. no arguments whatsoever I get ganked all the time in there I have no problems with that at all you can yeah, camp me if you want <laughs> That's, that is the interesting thing, though. It's like people have these negative experiences with ganking and things, and I'm like, but you were in, you were in a, a you must have been in a PvP area, or on a PvP server, or on a PvP server. And I think you know, 
it's uh, would you, would you go into a, Hold on a second. you know would you would you go into a, a League of Legends match and say oh no I'm yeah. I'm busy crafting I'm making my boots <laughs> or something like what leave me alone back here I'm just you, know, you, you stand in the middle of in the middle of the middle lane and you go oh stop attacking me I'm busy mm-hmm. you know I'm jungling I'm right jungling. now yeah leave me I'm supposed to be goes, jungling oh. and then. Like you can complain about that, you can say I'm trying to jungle, stop attacking me. But then, what about the other person? What about the other person who's in there going, "This, this is a PvP game. <laughs> right. I'm here to, I'm here to fight. What, what are you doing? Like, why I'm are juggling. you, why are I'm you ruining my experience? Why are you coming into this PvP area and making me think that like you're some kind of like you're a threat or like I, I need to fight you? But then suddenly, like you don't, you don't want to do. Like, what's up with that? Let's hear what Tolbrain has to think. Say about this. And he's back. <laughs> I was kidding about Tobin, that. where have you been? We've been sat here in silence Jeez. waiting for you. We were my dead mouse, air. My, my cat brought in a mouse. So, oh, um, great. Her, Congratulations. Her screaming and uh, got a bit worried for a moment. So We can we can feed it to the falcon in my backyard. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, so Tobin, what is jungling? Jungling? Yeah. In terms in of... I don't in know. Love. In league, yeah. The guy favorite. up above you was talking. To, what do you want? I'm jungling, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, jungling, and, is, uh, jungling usually means just going out and finding neutral mobs and killing them. Mm-hmm. Uh, when it comes in to player jungle. versus player, in a in a jungle, it could be a oh. desert. You never know. It's, um, there is then, there is a, a PVE element in there league is of yeah, Legends, small, so yeah, though. definitely, yeah. It's yeah. very small, like, tiny, because you can't win the game through the PVE. You have to actually do the PVP. So. Mm-hmm. What is this in context to? <laughs> you were I was, making, <laughs> I was I was trying to make the whole the whole consent point again and being like if you went into a legal if you're in a PvP area in an in an MMO game to me that's the same as walking into like a league, League of Legends battleground you should be there to fight you know yeah. and if if you're if you're off jungling in League of Legends and someone comes and and tries to gank you you know, would your reaction be, oh, leave me alone. Stop <laughs> picking me on alone. me. I'm trying, to, <laughs> I'm trying to farm the jungle here, can't you see? And, you know, obviously in your head that's what you're thinking, but then they're going, yeah, I'm, I'm on the other team. I'm, I'm trying to stop you from doing that. And, you know, for you to, for you to uh, refuse to engage or not, you know, not be complicit within, a, it's, it's like the contractual thing, it's the consent, isn't mm-hmm. it? You're there to yeah. fight. So if you're not doing that, or if you just sat in your base for the entire match, everyone would be a bit annoyed with you. Exactly. <laughs> and I think you know when, you know when does it go back the other way, and you start to ruin the experience for the person who does want a PvP. And that was, you know, it's just something to think about. Yeah. At the same nice. time, <laughs> I don't like I don't like free for all PvP in MMOs. I don't think it's I don't think it works. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I think I, that, <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't. I don't Planet think it's, it's proper. I think you need you League need solid systems in place. Yeah, you need solid systems for players to interact with. If you leave players to their own devices, it's boring. That's why Daisy turns into kill on sight because it's the path of least resistance. And it's That's very it's Daisy very exciting. I gotta say, it's very exciting to kill people in Daisy. But that's that's the thing, isn't it? When when you're playing Daisy and you encounter another player, if you immediately kill them, then it's over. And then and you that, get their like, stuff. If you, if you attack, if you attack them, like only about three things can happen: you can kill them, they can kill you, or you can both like just leave and escape, and and no one dies. That's the only three things that can happen. How many different experiences could you have within that game if you didn't immediately kill someone? What are all the most? What are all the most? What about interesting stories that come out? I will of tell you an interesting in- story. Some guy's got three hundred zombies chasing after him. He's about ready to escape, and you shoot him right as he's climbing <clears> up the ladder. That's poetic. That's like beautiful. That's <laughs> that, that's just like something you write down and, and tell your ch- grandchildren right, about. In, in some instances, it can be interesting. But what could potentially have happened if you'd helped him escape? I'm not Character development. Get, yeah, I'm not going to get into a thing with 300 zombies. I only got like five rounds. I see it. I see I, it on his face. Dreadnought gets me, my boy. I, I could have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I could have had a boyfriend, and you shot him. You son of a bitch! You shot my. Well, take one of the boyfriend. zombies. They're they're available. No, they're biting. <laughs> they're biting. They yeah. bite. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Give them a little bit of brains and sautéed, nicely sautéed brains, and then they'll be. And where am I going to get said brains? 
from dead Minecraft. other player. Yeah, other dead player. Yeah. You shoot him, you take his brains out, and you use it for your zombie lover. I got it all figured out. Zombie loving. Add me a player. All right. Are we good for the PvP? Because yes, we please. have to skip on. <laughs> We have to get on. So with it. I'm so sick of talking about it today. Honestly. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't even talking about free for all PvP. <laughs> I know. Anyway, mm -hmm. I know. Moving on. And moving on. <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, for those just joining us, we're going to do a quick one tonight. Um, Locke has surgery tomorrow. He's getting his elbows replaced with his kneecaps. Mm. So I can do this all the time. Very important. Very nice. Uh, yeah. And then um, I started something down there below, below Trendane. See the little scrolly thing. Okay, so Trendane did not ask me to do this, and for those on the cast who might not know what this is all about, uh, Trendane has an uh, 8086 computer with 256K of RAM. It's 156 years old now. It's a 156-year-old <laughs> computer. It's an abacus. And he's try Trendane really would like to play a game called EverQuest Next. And unfortunately, the abacus will not play EverQuest Next no matter how many times he patches it. Not even in compatibility mode. Mm, not even in compatibility mode. The abacus is not working. So we are actually the fans of Trendane. Are we're gonna we're trying to raise some money, and if you click on that link below, you can see uh, the supercomputer fund that we're trying to raise some money for Mr. Trendane. It's it's not working for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, uh, Shadow Spawn says if you move, move all the counters to the left, <laughs> it will load. So maybe that, maybe you can try that next time. But anyway, so um, yeah, we we I guess if you had some extra spare parts, you could donate them too. But that gets tricky with ship, uh, shipping and all that. Basically, we're gonna uh, send the money into a new egg and get him a new egg. Like the, you can't really <laughs> see it, but there's egg. a. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Which came first, the abacus or the egg? Uh, <laughs> Because dinosaurs were using abacus this is long before. No, wait, they, that though? makes no sense. Hmm. Abacai, the, I think. Yeah. Well, the, you know, tyrannosaurs were really pissy because they had tiny little arms they couldn't masturbate with. I mean, that's why they were so angry all the time. Yes. You can't use abacus either because it's very hard. To, anyway. Anyway. Um, a friend of mine gave me it last night. She gave me a, a 500 gig enterprise class hard drive. So. There you go. Nice. Very nice. Oh, so he's on his way. So if you guys can donate a, a few bucks, that would be really fantastic. Uh, I'm not going to bother you every single week. We're actually only, there's only like 20 days left or 29 days left. We just started it the other day. Uh, it's less than a month left, and we're going to turn it off. And whatever we get, we get, and that's what we're going to use to build him his super pooter. So there you go. Oh, All right. I, I want to play EverQuest with Trendang, don't you? Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do. Exactly. Not you guys, obviously. <laughs> just, just <laughs> sort of. <laughs> I'm gonna you know, spend hours creating my character. I'm gonna get in, and you know these 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 two guys here are gonna be like, "Yeah, you made it!" And I'm gonna stab them, like, <laughs> and then they're gonna run off without without a second's hesitation. Yep. And we're not gonna run off either. We're, no, we're, we're just gonna wait. sit there and camp. <laughs> yeah. If you do donate, by the way, Trendane will do a uh, a ringtone for you, whatever you want him to say, in whatever voice he can do. Oh my god. <laughs> I want I want a ringtone uh Harvey Firestein uh ordering a pizza. What I what, feel what? like I know I know that Foo's watching this right now and I know that she already has an idea for this. <laughs> See, what what uh, worried me was I immediately got the the idea that that someone would get me to to do their their ringtone of just like like well, you can appreciate this since you are now dressed as a Muslim. Yes. Um, as doing this ululation and going off in the middle of the airport and all the TSA being like... <gasps> <laughs> that would be great, actually. No, it wouldn't. No. Not really. <laughs> if you get that for your ringtone, I applaud you. <laughs> all right. So, there we go. That's what that's all about down there. Let's go ahead and get started with our Q&A because we have only 20 minutes to go through all these questions. Uh, Tobrain, are you our question reader tonight? Once again, I've been asking my face up here so they can read my lips, my luscious lips. Luscious <laughs> lips. And his beautiful beard tonight. He's, he's starting to grow the scruff, and people say he looks uh, sexy. Um, it's just nice. Throw a little bit of texture just to make it tick. I, I think it's unfair. English isn't his first language, after all. Yeah, he's Scottish. <laughs> Speak some Gaelic. Come on, go. I don't know any Gaelic. Oh, you're Scottish. Make it. Make it so. 
Okay, this is bordering on Matt Smith's first Doctor Who episode where he's like, you're Scottish, fried something. I'm like, dick! Oh my god! <laughs> well, David Tennant was, right? No, Matt Smith. No, Matt Smith. Matt Smith's first episode. Oh, I know, but wasn't David Tennant was Scottish, I thought. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. I think, wasn't that the joke? He Maybe. still is. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> so is John Barrymore. <laughs> so is John Barrymore, who just totally trips me out because he has a zero Scottish accent when he speaks. And, uh, so is Mel Gibson, if the film Braveheart is to be believed. Mm, I do not believe Although apparently it's not totally historically accurate. So it's a little bit not. of the stretch. The guy's name really wasn't even William Wallace. All right, go ahead there, so <laughs> Brand. Question. Uh, this person's name, Callus. Will we have back, back anim- pa- uh, pack animals for harvesting? No, so, my question is, do you mean... The harvesting of animals. <laughs> yeah, I want to. <laughs> or do you mean harvesting from pack animals? You're wanna... following around with a burlap bag. Come on. Yeah, no, I want to harvest eat... pack animals. <laughs> I want like them growing in a field. I can just walk it's... through and just cut them down and. and... <laughs> we can we can make we can make a new a new um, founder pack mm-hmm. and and it comes with a pickaxe. And... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's got a cow's head. But... Harvest pack animals from. Yes. I want I want a pack to put the animals that I harvest in. Mm. That's that's how I want to do it. Well, so you have like a, the, a donkey oh carrying a cow and a bull at the same time. <laughs> don't put them in the same pack. Of, yeah, that'd be bad. <laughs> oh god! I think that uh, they lot. haven't talked anything about uh, whether or not you're going to actually have any animals that will follow you around that will be yeah. utility animals. Uh, we've talked about it in previous episodes saying we'd love to see something like that, but it is not mm. confirmed. I know uh, Dave Georgeson did uh, do a little tease on Twitter, as he's fond of doing, about um, having uh, NPC companions. So that could be something. But I think this question, you know, it, it, it makes a lot of assumptions about how um, how crafting and harvesting are, and things are gonna are going to work. Um, that we just we just don't know yet. I guess the answer would be probably cosmetically uh, for landmark eventually, but. Uh, for EverQuest next, we have no idea. All right, go. This question, Essa Capona asks, what are the most in- important in-game tools for guilds? Uh, the most mm. important in-game tools for guilds would be guild members. Guild, are we talking yeah. landmark or um, EverQuest next? Oh, no. Just, just well, that's I mean, uh, obviously a guild, some kind of guild utility window of some sort where you could uh, keep track of your members, promote them, demote them, um, Set messages of the day, all that kind of stuff is uh, obviously critical. Um, maybe you could see how somebody's activity time would be great too, because you could see who the real hardcore players in your guild are and who just sloughs off. Uh, and it would be nice in a way that if uh, it sort of linked it to a central account too, so if somebody's on 15 different characters all the time, then uh, you could keep track of it. But Guild calendar. Calendar. Yeah. Uh, ways, ways to effectively communicate with different. Uh, members within the guild, uh, setting up guild events, you know, being able to <laughs> the phrase monitor the activity of guild members. It sounds a bit the NSA of guild. Like, you know, yeah, but, we'll call it the prison. Well, you know, just, <laughs> just so, just so like <laughs> leaders and guild officers like know, you know, what kind of times different people log in. You know, how much how much time different people spend playing. You know, just so they can plan events around it. Would make it a lot easier, but you know the the way things are going at the moment, it could it could even operate more like a social network system where you're, especially because they want us. It seems like they want us to just be playing one character. Like uh, you could almost have a social network situation where you have your main character thing, and you could have status updates, and you could like different pages, and you could follow different builders in Landmark, and then from that, that you could also have your sort of guild list almost like pages mm-hmm. that you that you'd have like on you know Facebook or whatever and that seems to be a system a, a few a few online games have been social toying in, yeah. some kind of a social element would be great yeah and because uh, guild wars 2 I talk about it a lot it had it had multi guilding but because there was no there was no sort of permeation between the different guilds there was no network between guilds like it, it didn't really matter that you could join that you could join multiple guilds like it didn't facilitate social interaction it didn't it didn't create new links between people whereas if you design it if you design it to operate like a social network where it's like hey 
so and so of your friends did a dungeon with this person like maybe you should add them as a friend you know so and so person gave this person a thumbs up for their healing in whatever instance or battleground or whatever maybe you'd like to invite them to be a healer for your group something like that could be interesting it might it's also like be go ahead Tim. no on no, you go <laughs> I don't want that. <laughs> just go <laughs> okay um, I was going to say it would also be interesting if they could l somehow link that somewhat conditionally to the forums so like if you yeah. um, had you know we're going to do this raid on such and such you know we're, we're going to go try to take Lord Nagafin's temperature um, for the rectal problem anybody I wasn't going to go that detailed but thank <laughs> you um <clears throat> Sorry, I'm an, I'm an old nurse. Just nothing else. <laughs> I just throw the bad mental image in my head right now. Just like, hmm. <laughs> it's probably a little bit different than the mental image in my head, which has to do with an X Files episode. But never mind, we'll move on. Koika. Now. Crikey. Toby, what? You were seeing this. <laughs> God, you're wheezing. <laughs> you see this gray in my beard? <laughs> I've got gray in mind too. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, hold on. Real quick pause. I want to put a shout out to Swords who donated to Trendane. Swords. Swords just got us a lot closer to our goal. Thank you, Swords. Swords is a community hero. He's, yeah, really, he's cool. a really good Post, guy. Post Thank you, Swords. Everywhere. Thank you so much. So, very good, very good. Donkey All right. shine. Yes, let's move on there because actually we have to uh, we have to keep going. Okay, uh, Super Corgi asks, what do you think of the inclusion of SOE Emote? Fixing it so your characters don't look like they're having a seizure. The way e EQ... Well, EQ2, it's a bit <laughs> flunky. Or clunky, or whatever. Yeah. Or both. Bit. Or both, yeah. It doesn't... It's not as smooth. I mean, it was fun. I, I did a video, if you guys watch, where I did... I was a frog lock. Yeah. But the problem is you got frog lock... really smooth. Like, I did it. My character was had a face like... Bleh. Yeah. <laughs> it so it was ridiculous. So uh. it, it looked good. But you know, I, I'd love to see with the more with the higher detailed poly polygon polygon models that they're going to have in request yeah. next. And polygon doodle all the day. Polygon doodle um, all the day. I, I did it with my with my Karen in EQ two while I was eating um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and it just looked horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're looking forward to that. All right, go ahead. Next one there, Mister Toberan. Uh, Eska Capona asks, do wind change its direction or is it always being blown from the same direction? The winds of change. Quite interesting. Is Reminds me of a Kansas song. Uh, I don't, we don't know. Sorry. If, if <laughs> nothing else, it would be interesting to see it change with the seasons. That, yeah. you know, in winter it comes from the north, thus justifying the colder. I don't see how the changing wind would have any effect unless there was a sailing mechanic involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep, that'd be cool. It could be interesting. Yeah, we don't know. I mean, just from an aesthetic point of view, it's just like fly could change di direction, but that's about it, really. Mm. Yeah. All right. Next. I mean, well, there's there's so many things that you can put in when when you have when you have wind and movement of air or movement of gases. If you think about it in that way, it could be a very very interesting mechanic. But you know, is it technologically feasible within the system? I, I'm, I'm it's feasible, sure. but it would be way too difficult, and it would alter a hunting mechanic too, because you'd have to get yeah. upwind from upwind, your prey. Yeah. So yeah, it could be very, very interesting, but whether it's feasible or not, or Ooh, whether it'd be high enough on the priority list for them to put in, I think might be another way to look at it. <laughs> Trinidad right says no. <laughs> <laughs> not ahead, a high priority. Save that for much later. But Go ahead, Tom Brain. Okay, Karen Navarin asks, question, Trendane, will you do an impersonation of your fellow hosts? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Next. <laughs> Uh, Gordon Q asks, do you think farming will be a viable profession in Landmark? Farming. Like, yeah. in the global sense of farming, like I'm out killing monsters over and over again and getting coins and coming back and selling my little scraps and then doing that repetitively over and over, or actually digging in the dirt and planting trees and bar bushes and stuff. I think it's a planting trees and bushes thing. but it could Maybe be not trees. Well, broccoli or trees, sort of little Corn. trees. Corn, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Have they, I, I don't know if they have it. They have not announced any of the professions other than adventurer. Yeah. Hmm. I think I think the phrase "viable profession" is interesting. I'm wondering, you know, how much 
how much time and effort we'd have to put in into becoming good at something within Landmark rather than EverQuest Next. I think in Landmark they'd probably want everyone, you know, to be able to do everything with relative ease just because, you know, it, it allows people to be more creative. On the other hand, maybe they would want to limit it to encourage social interaction, so I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one. Well, for those whiny bitches who wanted a more challenging game, you know, if you're if you're farming and, and some horde of orcs or ogres or whatever come through in their incredibly stylish loincloths that your neighbor made, not oh, necessarily yeah. specifically for them, but you know, the you know, your neighbor makes all these loincloths and sells them to this guy, and this guy gets a big cart and is transporting them off to a major city and gets ransacked by ogres who then don these these fantastically brilliant and so shapely defining um, loincloths, and then they come and they completely raise your crops that you've been mm. struggling so hard to... Every there's day your challenge. Yeah. <laughs> there's your challenge. I could, you know, honestly, uh, there's a farming Sounds simulator, and there is, there is like, a farm bill obviously on on facebook and things but those games actually are a little bit soothing except the farm bill one which is trying to get you to make more make trying to get you to spend money but other than that they there's something about just like planting a little seed in the ground and walking around and then watching it pop up and harvesting it and stuff i mean if that's something you, it, it interests you i don't see why they couldn't have it or why they would block you from enjoying that sort of thing or just being a, being able to build farms in Landmark, you know, being able to uh, build a re a reconstruction of the Kent farm from Superman, <laughs> you know, things or, like or that. Or field of not? dreams, if you build yeah, it, they will come. Or field of dreams. Farm. That would cover a lot of ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, thing, I mean. moving on. Let's go on. We've only got uh, a couple more minutes left. We got four minutes. We got to hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, okay, Ashfax uh, thirty three asks, "What type of mounts do you think will be available in EverQuest Next Landmark?" I want to see rhinoceros mounts. Just really slow, big, lumbering, take forever to go anywhere. And no flying uh, rhinoceros mounts. Four footed. Four footed uh, mounts. Four footed mounts. Oh, or chocobos. Oh, oh. I, yeah. <laughs> I've put uh, just uh, just. You know, there's already sci-fi gear in there. They want people to be building things from all different types of genres. You know, I have no doubt that eventually in Landmark people are going to be able to skin mounts in various ways as well. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they'll go. You know, it, it might be years down the line. It might be. I hope it isn't, but it, it could be that long. But, you know, just subterranean robotic mole mm -hmm. <laughs> diggers and... You know, <laughs> just all all manner of weird and wonderful flying saucers and tree swinging octopuses and God knows what else. Just ridiculous, that ridiculous. Hope, tree swinging hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I want to think about it. you start you start with like an animation for like a, a junk a monkey swinging in the jungle and you reskin it to look like an octopus. I'm sure there's someone out there that fit. could do that. Totally, yeah, totally mine. fantasy. I go. Cool. But this um, landmark, it's not. It's not meant to be. It's not meant to be fantasy, is it? Well, At all? Either. Right. Okay. A space okay. octopus. All right. Go. EQA nostalgia asks, "What are your thoughts on EQN and or landmark on PS4?" I and knew we you were going to ask that this. because yeah. EQOA, his main channel, it started out as a EQOA fan channel on YouTube, and he has made some great videos, so you guys should go watch them. But yeah. he's like into EQOA, and I couldn't stand that game at all. But hey. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of playing any kind of MMO on an, on a console. It's just it's not the place for it, personally. Um, I think it's brilliant for the game, but I, I won't I won't be playing it. <laughs> yeah. The fact that it's the fact that it's free, you think you know how many how many people own PlayStations? Look at what you know. Look at what the Xbox did for Minecraft. Mm -hmm. You know, fantastic. Takes it to a whole different a whole different type of gamer. You know, maybe that will get them interested in you know they'll they'll start off in landmark and they'll see how cool it is and be able to build and things because the whole minecraft aspect of it will sell them on it they'll realize how much they can do they'll have fun playing it they'll get their friends involved because it's free so there's no barrier to entry and then suddenly they go oh what's what's this ever quest next about and you know all of us benefit from that so to an extent well. sure but then when you try to have a conversation <laughs> with somebody who's on the console it's out there oh no! Now. You don't talk to them. You don't interact with them. Right? You, you, you treat them like they're some kind of whipping child. You're like, oh, that's a console player. Let's just ignore them. Oh no! Stay not, on the, them. not on the same server. No. <laughs> no Keep no, them no, away. No. Back to the yeah. pit, Satan. I don't want to say anything to do with you. All right. Next, let's go. Yeah, console uh, people do have diseases. 
Legendary Neurotoxin asks, should the stakes of PvP be higher when players fight in deeper layers of below the surface? So in like the tiered layer you got surface and whatever else is below. Hmm. I'm tempted to say no, just because if I dig that far down, I don't want to die. Good answer. <laughs> valuable stuff down there, I don't want to die. Alright. As simple as that. Next. Uh, We're just running out of time. We got we got like ten more questions. We got like three minutes. Okay, sorry. Got two bro. more questions. Calm down. Oh, okay. Uh, we got wrap up too. I'm very uh, good about Gordon schedules. Gordon Q asks in landmark, what can we carry in buckets beside water and lava? Liquids. Liquids. Mm. <laughs> Gravy. Very small rocks. Mm. Ch churches. A, a duck. She <laughs> <laughs> turned me into a new. <laughs> I got better. Shark the chum. bottom of a crucifix <laughs> for ease of carrying just over the shoulder. Sorry, guys, yeah. we're being silly, but we really have no idea. We like none of us are developers, so we're just kind of like rainbow so, you know, juice, you know. rainbow <laughs> juice. Yeah, <laughs> you pour it on anything and it becomes fabulous, fabulous <laughs> with sparkles, liquid rainbow. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Don't ever do that again. Please oh, don't yeah. ever do that again. <laughs> don't don't go gay lock. Yeah, we got. I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I just, just don't do Wait. that again. <laughs> you don't. You don't go gay. You're born gay. Yeah. Some nature versus Same. nurture. I mean, nature I've tried to convert yeah. many people. But Does it work? <laughs> Sometimes. Mm, I think then they were already predisposed. Well. I'm not gonna argue it. Next, yes, Tobin, next please. Time, please. <laughs> We're digging into a deep hole that somebody's gonna PvP us in. Don't call it that, <laughs> Tobin. Go. <laughs> uh, PCG Oil Oil Git asks uh, plot size. Seen the castle, but no idea of the height or depth limits. Any clue? Big. Dave uh, Jordan said, said the plots are big. Big height. Height was. 1500 meters depth they're still working on because of the procedural nature of subterranean areas um, but they want us to be able to build underground obviously but that's that's going to be an issue and well there's a problem because it'll stay my, an issue my, for a while my statue for Omid is, is 1600 <laughs> feet so. I know right well maybe you could build like a, a 10 meter pit in the ground right and then yeah and clear it away and put the lava down there because that'll be um, and his feet. But then, but then there's the issue because Omid's like an iceberg, and only only a third of him is actually above ground, and like all the sort yeah. of, all the tendrils and everything reach down. The evil <laughs> the parts. <earth. laughs> all the, so all the evil. Big massive like Omid head coming out the ground. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Somebody like yeah, blow it I'm out. I'm I, 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 feel so, I feel so bad that I started this whole Omid is evil thing because it's been so <laughs> lovely to me. <laughs> Um, he is, no. but I wrote a little little note the other day, and he immediately thought I was being snarky. And I'm like, no, I just like being friendly. <laughs> Jeez. Just relax, Omid. I'm not jumping on you. That's lock. All right, next one. Was that it? No, last. Last question. No, that's it. That's it. That's, that's it. That's perfect. perfect. It is now 6 p.m. Eastern. We one hour like we promised. Oh, no way. Mr. Smith's in the chat, and I never noticed. Is he? It's yeah. It's bad. It's good, isn't it? Oh, hey, geez. thanks for coming, man. Sorry, I, I totally didn't. We didn't, didn't even get a chance to show hair. his video. Yeah. Here, let's show his video. <laughs> this is Mr. Smith. <laughs> yeah, screw you, Locke. We're showing his video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't leave yet, Locke. <clears throat> All right, so uh, I guess that's pretty much it tonight. Yeah, I believe so. I so, feel like we've done good work here tonight. But it was quick. It was over so fast. I feel like I feel like good things have happened. Yeah. Wilkie says, "Can we do a three-hour show next week?" Okay. Oh, that's one thing. I'm I'm not going to be here next week, so it's, it's unfortunate. We have to find somebody to fill in for Locke. If anybody in the audience would like to fill in for Locke for a week, I am taking applications. Mm-hmm. So, it does tell, help help to have an English <laughs> accent. Yeah, you have to have a British accent <laughs> of some sort. The Irish works too. I need to have a beard. To contest Locke's beard, that is. Yeah, a you must. must have a beard of some sort. If you're a female, you need to have a beard too. So challenge, challenge. Yeah, challenging. <laughs> Nergerbert. Oh, uh, Diggs oh, accents are when... fine. What's that? <laughs> Diggs asking when do we see a, a Project 1999 vid? Mm. It's kind of, it's kind I might play with you guys. I still have it installed. It's just I can't get involved. Yeah, yeah, get involved. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I guess yeah. Anyone, anyone that wants to, that wants to get involved. Trendane, your your computer might even might even run. <laughs> <laughs> it might run Project 1999. That's funny. That's actually about oh. how old it is, right? Didn't you get it around that time? 
Show him your mouse. This is just showing how old this computer is. <laughs> Show it. Come on. Is it beige? Whip it out. I hope it's beige. It is beige. It is a oh Microsoft Intelli mouse. Does that have a ball in the bottom? Whoa. No, it's got a laser. That's pretty high tech. All right, okay. <laughs> See how you want. Now, now, in my defense, I do have a, a Logitech G, G5 mouse, Yeah. I think. Uh, and I, I'm just not using it. Yeah. It's, you know. We're going to send him a new mouse. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, um, cool. yeah, anyone anyone that's interested in some uh, some old school EverQuest action and wants to help out uh, <laughs> me and Tobin, we're on the red server on Project 1999. Yeah. So yeah, come on, come on down. If I can get out of Nariac, I'll meet up with you guys. Oh yeah, Yay. it's gonna be epic just getting out of there. <laughs> uh, yeah, as physics, if you said, "Good Lord, man, you need to get," yes, he does. That's the whole point. <laughs> The little That's link below. Why this is here? <laughs> this is the the link down there. Just before we go sign off tonight, real quick, guys, is uh, we're trying to raise money for uh, our friend here, and uh, he unfortunately cannot afford a new computer, so he could play EverQuest Next with us, and we want him to play EverQuest Next with us. So we've started a, a, a fund, and it's down there. It's all legit and legal. You can go there and uh, donate however much you can afford. And if you can't donate, just spread the word for us. That's all we ask. And uh, we're doing great. We started it on Tuesday, and we're already up to over six hundred and thirty-four dollars. Mm -hmm. So you better get in quick. Yeah, get in quick, and you can get. Uh, and, and if you do uh, donate, um, Mr. Trendane will do a uh, voicemail message for you, or something, or a ringtone. I, I found it kind of amusing that, like, I think it was the second or third day I woke up and I checked it, and I discovered that there was yet another reward. Mm -hmm. Listed up there. And I was like, you know, I didn't, I didn't agree to name any characters. <laughs> okay. about anything. Where did this? Where did this? We're whoring you out. <laughs> yeah, it would just be nice if they, I was like, so help me, if another one of these things pops up, it's just you know, Trendade will have your baby. No, I won't. You know, it's just, I might. Holy crap! Them. Somebody else just donated. Uh, Shadow Spawn. Woohoo! Um, Thank you, Shadow Spawn. To, to twenty one twelve. I have been requested to say Hoots Man. Apparently. <laughs> What? Oh, uh, that's good old so Spanish. So I just said to the Scottish guy to say Hoots Man, so... I don't know, I don't get that Hoots joke. Hoots Man! <laughs> yeah, Trinidad and I are just like, okay, we're just, I don't know, get this one. Could you translate that joke into American? Yeah, Mer American, American, please. <laughs> uh, Scottish people talk funny. Yeah, I believe they do, that. it's silly. silly Says stuff. the that's English the American man. sense Says of humor, isn't man. it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's lost on me. Oh, Hoots Man, there's a moose loose in the house. In the hoose. About this hoose. That's like saying somebody from Boston should say, go pack your car and have it yet. Okay. <laughs> that makes a little bit of sense to me because there's a scene in um, in a, an old video game made by Virgin Interactive called Toonstruck where you go into this bar and the, the, the bartender is, is, is Scottish and there is a part where he says, there's a moose loose a bit in this hoose. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Hoot. Hootsman. Hootsman. Hootspa. Okay. All right. Well, we jumped the shark for tonight, so I think it's time to go. That was great. We did it in an hour and five minutes. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. And thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, uh, Swords and um, uh, Shadows, Shadows Pawn. Pawn. Yeah, he's got a long name. Shadows Pawn 2112. Thank you so much for donating. Anybody else, if you donate, I appreciate it, too. We will make a special video for you guys when this is all done. So, yeah. And we'll see you all next week. And then, uh, like I said, uh, write to me, geek at geekdomo.com, and let me know if you're interested in being on the show next week, filling in for Mr. Locke, and we'll throw you in the hole and see what happens. Bye, Bye. Throw you in the hole. <laughs> 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 all right. So, good night, everybody. We'll see you soon. Be careless.